Hi everyone, my name is Adam Plowman. I'm a postdoc at the University of Manchester working in computational materials science. Today I'd like to tell you about a code called Matflow that we've been working on for a few years. So what is it? Matflow is an open source code for computational materials science. The idea is that the user provides a simple YAML text file called a workflow template, which parameterizes the workflow. Matflow then executes the workflow on your machine or on an HPC cluster. And at the end, the user has a single output that encapsulates the data and processing of the workflow. The main aim is to allow researchers to form cohesive workflows from disparate software packages. There's no shortage of power, powerful simulation and modeling tools available to scientists these days, but especially in material science, if we want to generate maximum insight for minimum cost, we often want to connect together various tools into automated pipelines. This can include chaining together pre and post processing packages with simulation software, but also integrating experimental data to help with model calibration. Matflow aims to do this whilst also making reproducibility and transparency easier for researchers. So once we have the single output from the workflow, we can reuse part of it in another workflow or upload it to a public data repository and generate a DOI that can be cited in a paper or we can share it on cloud services so other researchers can inspect it. So next I'm going to discuss uh, a little bit about how Matflow works, but to make sure you can follow along with the example, I'll firstly give some context for the sort of work we do in uh, computational material science. So often we have a material or we're developing a new material, uh, and the question we want to answer is, does my material have suitable properties for a given application? So for example, is it strong enough or hard enough? Increasingly, we can turn to computers to help answer these questions. Computers can be very good at things that are more difficult to achieve with experiment alone, like, for example, systematically sampling some parameter space. But to make sure the simulations we use are accurate, we still need experimental input to calibrate the model. If you look at a metal at the microscopic level, you'll see it's made up of many grains, each of which has its atoms aligned in a different way. The shape, size and orientation of these grains all affect the overall properties of a material. So when we prepare to study a material virtually using simulation, one of the important inputs to the simulation is this set of orientations, which is also called the texture of the material. To read and analyze the texture information from experiments, we use a software package called MTEX. Once we have our model set up, we can simulate how it behaves using another software package. This one is called Damask. And after the simulation is complete, we can draw some conclusions about the suitability of the material for a given application. So here we show just two software packages, MTEX and Damask, and quite a simple pipeline. But we can imagine scenarios where we have many different software packages that connect together to form complex pipelines that could include, for example, repeating something until an output is converged. In these cases, Matplot can significantly streamline the work. So how does it work? We start with a workflow template. This can be written as a YAML or a JSON file, or it can be built in Python using the Matflow API. A template is essentially a list of tasks that you'd like to execute. Each task has a well-defined input and output parameter set. In this example, we're firstly taking the orientation data from a texture file that was produced by an experiment. As an additional input parameter, we are specifying, specifying how many orientations we'd like to sample from the experimental data. The next task, task two, then takes a sample texture from the first task and combines it with some other parameters to build a representative model of the material. Here we're showing the model mesh resolution as an additional input. In general, we can specify any number of tasks and when submitted, they will execute sequentially. Matflow also supports more complex scenarios, such as iterating over a subset of tasks, which can be useful for for fitting model parameters to experimental data. The set of tasks that a user can select from to include in their workflow template are defined in another YAML file. In this file, we define what we call task schemas. The schemas declare what the input and output types are for a given task, and also how the task is actually executed. So in the case of task one, we're mapping a texture file and a number of orientations to an orientations parameter. And in the case of task two, we're mapping the model resolution and orientation data to a model geometry, which can then be simulated. Matflow uses the task schemas to work out dependency relationships between tasks. 
For example, because task two requires an orientations parameter and task one generates an orientations parameter, Matflow knows to wait for the output of task one before executing task two. The task scheme is then linked to a third YAML file, which tells Matflow how a given software package is invoked or accessed on this particular machine. Integration with external software is simplified by the plugin system. The method of integration varies depending on the software. For instance, you might just need to run an executable with some command line arguments. However, often we need to generate some specific input files first, and this scenario is handled by the plugins. Matflow has been specifically designed to maximize reproducibility. So for example, the workflow template, task schemas, and plugins are all machine agnostic components. In fact, Matflow relies on a separate package that we've written called HPC Flow. This package provides the workflow engine that defines the data model and handles interactions with HPC schedulers. HPC Flow provides a software development kit that can then be used to build domain specific instances which is what we've done with Matflow for material science. So Matflow is a wrapper around HPC flow and includes predefined task schemas, parameter definitions, and plugins that material scientists will find useful. I'm now going to show a quick demo where we submit a workflow template using the Matflow CLI and then examine the results using Python in a Jupyter notebook. So here we are logged into an HPC cluster, and on the left, we have an example workflow template. You can see the workflow has a name uh, and a list of tasks to execute. The first task is, as in the previous example, to uh, sample some orientations from the experimental uh, data using the MTEX software. One feature I'd like to highlight here is the ability to use multiple values for a given parameter using what we call sequences. So in the first task, we have defined a sequence on the num grains parameter. And this basically means that the task will be executed three times once for each of the supplied values. Matflow will also execute any downstream tasks that rely on this task multiple times as well. So we'll end up with three simulations. The next tasks are then to generate the model geometry, make geometry, uh, to then parameterize how the model should be deformed in task three here, and then finally run the simulation in task four. I'll now submit this workflow using Matplow by typing Matplow go, and then uh, the workflow names, so demo workflow.yaml. We can see the Matplow validates the template against the available plugins, and then submits a series of job scripts to the scheduler corresponding to different workflow tasks. Now I'm going to demonstrate how we can use Python to examine some of the data in a workflow similar to one that we just submitted. So we'll first load some imports and the load workflow function from Matplow, which we then use to load the workflow into a variable. So now the workflow is loaded into memory. Um, and because we used a sequence uh, in defining our workflow, we actually have multiple simulations to look at here. Uh, and we refer to these as multiple elements. For each element, we can add a trace to a plot by extracting the relevant data from the workflow. We can also use the uh, dependency relationship between tasks to correctly label these traces according to the original parameter that was sequenced. In this case, the number of grains as defined in the first task was uh, sequenced to three values. And so we're see seeing the, uh, the result here of those three different simulations. If you'd like to find out more about Matflow and HPC flow, please check out our GitHub organization at github.com forward slash HPC flow.